right, we're here at SEMA 2021. I'm here with Kevin Erickson, and he's got a really interesting car. I've been following this build on social media for uh, for a while now. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this car? This is my uh, 1972 Plymouth Satellite. I call it Electrolyte. This was my favorite car growing up, and I finally found one, and I wanted a drivable, powerful, usable car. And so uh, I also wanted to learn about the new technology, EVs, so this is fully Tesla swapped. Fully Tesla swap. So has all these out of a Model S, I believe is what it was, right? Right, yeah. Most of the parts out of a P100D mm -hmm. uh, Model S, but I kept it just rear drive. I wanted the power yeah. of the Tesla, but I didn't want any other Tesla tech. I wanted yeah. to keep it muscle car kind of uh, all under the shell. Right on, right on. So, all right, give us a walk around, show us how everything's packaged. So, up front uh, was a great place for the battery. So, the Tesla Model S battery. Uh, I wanted the 100 because you can have a higher amperage output from the 100, less voltage sag under throttle mm -hmm. than say the 90 or the 85. Right. But I had to repackage it because it's normally under the base of the car. Yeah, yeah. So I packaged it in two boxes here. I've got six below and I've got four more on top. So there's 10 here, an additional six in the back. They're all wired in series for the 400 volts that it takes to get the full power. What kind of range does it provide for you? On a full charge, if I took it to 100% and drove it easy, I'd go 300 miles oh yeah um, so that's not best for the longevity of the battery yeah right I right. take it to 85 percent I plan mm -hmm. on 2 to 250 and um, just plug it back in like well that's plenty of range for something like this yeah. well cool let's keep walking let's see what else I see we got wheel wood brakes uh, I got a master cylinder here yeah it's got power brakes so I have a, a vacuum motor to uh, to give vacuum to the booster yeah. the batteries are also completely thermal managed so everything from battery heat on the cold days circulation amongst themselves with the heater or it can go through the radiator to bleed off heat as they warm up. Mm -hmm. It'll also kick on the air conditioner and use AC chilling on real hot days to chill them below ambient temperature. So did what, did you engineer all of that? or I programmed it all through the Holly smart wire uh -huh. using uh, CAN bus temp sensors. Okay. It's all, constantly monitoring and making adjustments between a three-way valve and the pumps. It's all automatic. The, uh, the, the next part of the batteries is the monitoring. So it's got an Orion 2 BMS. That BMS uh, is in charge of allowing discharge. If the battery's not healthy, you can't discharge. And you also can't charge. Gotcha. So there's uh, about 10 wires per module, uh, about 160 wires that are monitoring temperature and voltage of all cells. Each one of these has six cells mm -hmm. for a total of 96 cells. Now what's great about the Orion BMS is in the CAN bus, I added an OBD2 sensor. And I can use a Bluetooth dongle and go to the torque app just like you can in a regular car. And there's about 250 parameters I can monitor. So on one screen, I can see all 96 cells. Mm -hmm. And I've got them grouped per module. So if I was to see a problem in one of those cells, I can pinpoint the module and just replace it. Swap it out, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So around before that uh, monitoring, on the dash, the easiest way to do it was to use tablets. So I've okay. got uh, two eight-inch tablets. One is all the data from the battery management system. Mm -hmm. Multiple pages, you can design the dash however you want. Then I have the second dash for moving map, uh, rear view camera, uh, entertainment, anything else you might want. Right, all of, all of your extra stuff there. Yep. Very cool. The suspension's all coil over. Uh, I have an aftermarket QA1 front end, mm -hmm. and then an E-Pass Performance electric rack and pinion. So the uh, electric rack, you can dial the pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you want pinky steering in the parking lot, you got that. If you want to tighten it up, Euro Sport handling on the road, you can do that. And that's, it's, that's it's really just got perfect feel. This is close to like OEM type uh, features on yeah. this car here with stuff like that, you know. It, I wanted the old car interior, so it's all just factory reproduction, mm -hmm. uh, except for the heated leather seats. Um, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, a nice one. It, it, it had there, to be yeah. comfortable, so it's got full air conditioning, mm -hmm. all thermostat controlled. PWM controlled also, so I can vary the speed of the 400 volt AC compressor on uh, not so hot days, 80, mm -hmm. 90 degrees, I can just run at low RPM and, and have a lower amp draw. If it's 100, 110, I crank that thing up to 6,000 RPM and it'll just cool cool all day long. <laughs> it's a meat locker in there. Yeah, right. So I could only fit 10 batteries up front. The six uh, remaining are in the back as well as the motor. So this is an entire Tesla subframe. Oh, yeah, you can see the rotors and everything, yeah, the hub. calipers and all that. Are exactly. Up. Hub to hub is all Tesla. So, so did you build a custom subframe to mount that back there? Or? I used the Tesla subframe. So oh, no it, it's all an aluminum house subframe and that has the motor, the differential, the inverter, the half shafts, the suspension arms, 
uh, all the way out to the brakes. Um, and luckily this is a big fat car with right. big factory flares. So all I had to do was get the right offset, which happened to be a C6 Corvette offset. So off the shelf wheels. Off the shelf all the way across. Yeah, yeah I didn't have cool. to go super custom on that. The only problem was once I got that under the car, there was no room for suspension uh, shocks. So uh, then we, I came up with the cantilever suspension with the push yeah, rods. Yeah, that's, that's really sharp. So those push rods go down to the factory Tesla mounting point. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was doing the front suspension, uh, it was owned by uh, Carl Gerst at the time. He helped me figure out the motion ratio of the Tesla to get the right spring rate. And uh, it turns out it's it's actually equal on all four corners. All right. Uh, with that motor weight back here and the batteries in the back, the car weighs 4350 and it's 55% rear weight. So we got some sports car characteristics. Now. Yeah, it's yeah. It's nimble. Uh, the squat when you're when you're uh, launching, it'll just plant the tires within reason. You still have to roll the pedal because that instant yeah. torque hits hard, but yeah. uh, it's a beautifully handling handling car. Yeah, it's great, man. It's beautiful and it's, it's really well engineered and thought out and everything. You did a great job on this car. Oh, thanks. So you get out and uh, get out and actually drive it on a daily basis? Or oh yeah, kinda, this, yeah, this has been my go-to driver. They see it at Home Depot all the time and uh, the grocery store, and this is what like, kids picking up at school. Yeah. And, uh, I actually saw your video where you took your uh, your wife and kids for the first power pull on it. That was yeah. Cool. I should have yeah. warned them a little bit on that one. I no, told them no, I you would have got what you got. Yeah, that, that was, was a good brilliant. reaction. Yeah, that was brilliant. It's just been great. You know, I plug it in at home. The charge port is behind the license plate uh, okay. where the fuel filler used to be. Uh, it's charged up when I leave. I can go rip for two to three hundred miles. Come home and you just plug it back in. It's always ready to go. Does it charge off of a Tesla charger? Not yet. They'll open their standard eventually. Mm. But I only have level two charging, okay. like a standard uh, electric car right now. Mm. Um, I will be adding CCS when that standard becomes aftermarket. Right, gotcha. And that'll be the, gotcha. the quick DC charging. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you giving us a look around. Like I said, I've been following it for a while. I was excited the opportunity popped up that we could, you know, meet up with you out here and everything. But uh, one of these days we'll meet up somewhere where we can actually go. For a ride. I'd love to give you a ride, so, man. It'd be a blast. Awesome. All right, yeah. man. It's good talking to you. You too. Thanks a lot. And uh, moving along. <laughs>